Well, while I was dealing with the Word of God for in the last, well, a little bit of period of time, I began to realize that through the Word, the most important thing that God really wants is that to have fellowship with us. We have been created to have fellowship with God. God has created man so that he can have fellowship. And fellowship is just more than just see him once in, once in a while, but to be able to share, to convey with each other, so that God wants to share his problem with us. And you think God doesn't have problem? Yes, that he does. But, uh, and he wants to, want us to share our problems with him. In the Old Testament, wherever we look at, we found that God doesn't just go down and talk to anybody at any time. He does have an appointed time. There is a time in which God will speak with man. When he created Adam, they were bodies. And so he could have talked to him any time. But he didn't do that. He had an appointed time in the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day. He would come and talk to him. So my friend, if sometimes you find that it seems that God is so far away from you, it is not that he's far away. He's just waiting for the appointed time in order to deal with you, talk with you, and to share with you the, 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 the wonderful things of God. Adam was not the only one. Abraham was the man of God. He was the friend of God. And yet God had an appointed time in which he had something particular and special for Abraham to know and to experience. And it was not on the tent, for he met many times, he met with the angels of God. It was not in the midst of his tribes, but God said that to Abraham, uh, to, uh, uh, to, Abra uh, to Abraham, he said, come out of there, go up to Mount Moriah, and I want to meet you there. God wants a place where we can meet him. He wants a place that he wants to get in touch with us. Mount Moriah is also the place where later on, Solomon built a temple for God. And God met the people of the, his people in that temple by coming down with the Shekinah glory. And the power of God was so great in that place that I wish it would happen here today. It was so great and powerful that no one was able to stand. But they were rolled down to the ground into the presence of the Lord. Jacob had a vision. It was an appointed vision, an appointed time in Bethel. There he saw, he met with God. So God does have a place where he wants to meet with us. If you go farther down in the word, you'll find that Moses, in the age of 80, hey, he was younger than me. Anyway, he, uh, at the age of 80, the Lord called him, put, uh, put his attention to the burning bush. And when it, uh, Moses was over there to see what was happening, the Lord stopped him and he said, Moses, stop right there. Take off your shoes. This is holy ground. God wants to meet us in his place in the holy ground. Isn't that wonderful? You just can't come, get up in the morning, wash your teeth and say, I'm going to meet with God. God will meet in the holy ground. When the nation of Israel grew, and if there were so many, there were um, a million people coming out of Egypt, God told Moses to create, to make a tabernacle, and in that tabernacle to put a, a, an Ark of the Covenant. There was the Ark made of gold, full and, and, uh, uh, and, and, and covered with gold, which it reminds us of the divinity of God. And that Ark was there, and God said to Moses, I will meet you there. Why can't God meet him on the other side of the camp? No, it was that place. 
He chooses the place where He wants us to meet Him. And my friend, we have to be sensitive to the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can come to that place where God can meet with us. And only when we can meet with God, our life will be changed and transformed by the power of God. Only then I know that I have met with God. Something will and must happen. Then in the new the uh, the uh, the, uh, the the ark of the covenant the covenant was covered. There were things inside that ark in which is the uh, 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 the the, uh, the the table of a uh, there was a uh, um, a vase uh, of gold with the manna. The manna will represent the, the uh, provision of God that He gave to the people of Israel. And that is also a reminder to us that as we are taking the offering or whatever, that God's provision is what is there for us every day, every moment. And God will provide for each and every one of us. When that hard time will come, He will provide if we have faith and we trust in Him. Amen. I remember my grandfather before he uh, was able to uh, uh, my grandfather when he got saved uh, that, uh, somebody asked him if he wanted to uh, um, uh, till uh, their farm and uh, and look after their farm and they would share half each and my father agreed and he went over there he began to till the ground he never knew that that ground was going to be the provision for for uh, for uh, dozen, dozens of people to the time of persecution when there was nothing to eat, there was nothing to buy, and they would go up to the farm and fill their clothes, uh, fill their bags with, fr with, with, uh, with, uh, with food and things to bring back home because it was the fruit of that farm was bringing because God had prepared it for a time to come because God knew that there was going to be a persecution. God knew that there was be a time where you couldn't buy a thing because there was nothing to buy and there was famine on the land. God knew that and he prepared. He prepared. Yes, he does prepare. I remember in our ministry, my wife and I, uh, the Lord, uh, we, we never asked for money, anybody. I never asked for money. I never want money from anybody. Uh, because I work for God and God has to provide for me as he promised he would. But there was a time when we uh, had a little accumulation of money or some money that came from somewhere. And my wife and I, we look at each other and said, I wonder what the Lord is going to send us next time. That money had to be spent. The money was coming in before we were able to go. The manna was the provision. There was also uh, uh, the, uh, there was uh, uh, also the stone, the table uh, that God had given to Moses, which is the word of God. And that word of God is something that has to be looked at and remembered, not only once a year, as the Israel was doing, but remember every day, because we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the throne of God. And therefore, if we want to survive in our spiritual life, we have to be able to keep that word in our heart, in our mind, and be able to meditate upon it, day and night. That was in the ark, my friend. It was a remembrance from the people that uh, uh, God uh, uh, was going to meet them there. And whenever he was going to meet them, he wanted them, them to, uh, he wanted to remind them that the provision of God was there, that the word of God was there. And there was one more thing. I mean, there were other things. I'm not interested in going into those details. I'll let those details to my uh, good friend Chris there, uh, but uh, I, I just want to go over the things uh, just like that. There was one more thing in the ark, and that was the rod of Aaron. Aaron was a priest. God had anointed him. Do you know that Aaron could not die because the mantle of the anointing was upon him? And the only time that he was able to leave this earth to go and be with the Lord forevermore is when he took off the mantle of uh, anointing. He put it on the, uh, on the side and then he was able to go. My friend, you want to live for a long life? 
keep under the anointing of the presence of God. And regardless if you are 20 or if you are 80 or if you are 120, you know that when the anointing is there, you are able to live and live and live and live and live and live and live. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? The anointing. That was the ark. That was there for the people of Israel to look at. And once a year, the priest will go to into near close to that ark. And he would uh, worship God there. That was the appointed place where God will meet with the people of Israel. The ark was so um, uh, important that it was covered by a big veil. You could not go, anybody could not go in there, but only the priest could go there, and that is once a year. You remember the story, they tell you that the priest had a, 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 a garment full of bells, so that people knew that if he was alive or he was dead, because if he wasn't right, and he came to the presence of God, and he was not right, God will strike him dead, and there he was. You know that they would uh, tie his foot with a rope, so that if he would die, they would pull him back from there, and go and bury him. My friend, uh, going, going into the presence of God is not so easy sometimes. We better make sure that when we go, we are going in a holy ground, we make sure that we take our shoes off and we worship Him with all of our heart and with all of our life. God has an appointed time. And on this appointed time, Jesus came into the world. And the cry that Jesus was crying to the desert and to the people was, I am the door. And he who comes through me, he can come and go out and throw a fine pasture. And he can come and meet with God. Jesus was the door. He came. They, uh, they came to die on the cross. And when he died on the cross, the words that he, the last words in which he said, they were, Father, it is finished. Unto thy hand I commit my spirit. Those words were so powerful, my friend, that something happened in that particular place where Jesus died. A wind came, a whirlwind came, and it came so strong that people could never had it before. But I believe that that wind took the words of Jesus and said, it is finished. And they blew it out to the universe. And the universe knew that God had finished His work. And man would be... Uh, be saved forever and forevermore. Hallelujah. It is finished, Jesus said. And the power of God came. And the temple uh, the temple curtain was tartered down in twine. Jesus said, it is finished. The ark is no longer covered by the, uh, uh, by, by the curtain. But now it is open. It is open to whosoever will. And the power of God is there. We can meet God anywhere, any place. And my friend Jesus said to his disciples in those days, he said, go to Jerusalem. Wait there for a few days and you will receive power from heaven. Don't go to Jerusalem into the temple because the curtain is broken. Now you can go anywhere. Jesus said to the woman of Samaria, and she said, he said, uh, not in Jerusalem, not even in Samaria, but the true worshippers, they will worship God in spirit and in truth. And in the day of the Pentecost, 120 people were sitting together. The power of God came upon them because it was finished. Jesus said it is finished. And the power of God came upon their life. Fire and wind came again upon their, li upon, upon their life. And 3,000 people received the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Jesus said, it is finished. And it was finished. The temple was there, but the curtain was broken. The ark of God were meeting with people was now on the open. God was meeting with people anywhere, any place. He started in uh, 2,000 years ago. In Jerusalem, 
in the, in, in the upper room. My friend, that's what God met with the people, with his people. They were so enthused with the power of God that a few years later, the greatest Roman Empire, the greatest power in the world that was in those days known, completely fell under the uh, rule and the kingdom of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, my friend, when God, the Spirit of God moves, He moves and things are going to happen. It was not few in the 19th century when the power of God came down again. There was a handful of people in Azusa Street which they were only getting together just to praise God and worship God like we do here every Sunday morning. But this day something special was happening. Happening. The power of God opened up. The temple was, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the curtain was open. Jesus said, it is finished. And the power of God came from heaven upon those people in Azusa Street. It's a street that nobody knew. Nobody ever was or not even on the map. But God knew and he had it on his map. And the power of God came and those people began to shake in tongues and speak in tongues and glorifying God. And from that time on, the Pentecost Pentecostal work, it began the greatest, the greatest work in the last two, uh, in the last thousand years. My friend, when God moves, He moves, and when He moves, things are going to happen. If Jesus said it is finished, I believe that it is finished, and things are going to start all over again. Today, we have millions of people in China who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They never knew about the Lord before, but now they know about the Lord. Millions Millions of people are receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I am just waiting for that day when I'm going to go in the presence of God and I will see those little Chinese fellows with me and I can get them by the arm and say, praise God, no matter where we are from, we are here to praise Him and glorify Him forever and forevermore. My friend, those are the days in which I am looking for. Not only that, not, not too long ago, it was in, uh, uh, in the, uh, ta in the uh, uh, countryside of uh, uh, the British Empire in Welsh, where people began to cry out to God because they were tired of the things that were going on before, before them. My friend, do you feel sometimes that you are tired of what is happening to the world today? Well, my friend, it's happened before. If we bind together, as the Welsh people bind together in that day, the power of God came upon them, and the big revival that the uh, century has ever known, it came to that country, and people were walking down the street, bound down, and praising God. Drunkards were healed, and people were healed, and the power of God was manifested in that country. It, Jesus said, it is finished, and it can happen. And if it's happened before, it can happen right now. Africa had the greatest revival that we have ever, never known in the last few, uh, the last few years. And before the Jesus come, before the coming of the Lord, I believe that the church is the corporate meeting, is the corporate place where people come together to worship God and to glorify His name. I also believe that this corporate church, uh, uh, place, uh, which is called the church, it will receive a supernatural abounding of power of God uh, that things are going to happen. This country is going to be changed uh, because somewhere, someplace, if it's not Azusa Street, it is Kawana Island, or whatever it might be, but the power of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It never changed. God will meet with us in an individual way. Yes, He does. But God will also meet with us in a corporate way. And my friend, I believe that this is the place. And when we worship, if we open our eyes and we open our mind, we will see the power of the Almighty God working. I am waiting for that day. I like to see what happened to the temple of dedication of the temple of Solomon. You know what happened. The windows of heaven opened up. The glory of God came down 
It was like a cloud over the people. The people were so filled with the power of God that they fell fat and set into the ground. Those who were singing and praising and playing, they couldn't do it anymore because they didn't have the strength of doing it anymore. They also fell down to the ground and the power of God was moving upon the people. Oh, I'm waiting for that day when we can experience exactly the same thing. It is possible, yes it is, because on the cross, Jesus said those final words, Father, into thy hand I commit my spirit. And he said, it is finished. The wind blew the word to the universe. The Bible say that also at that time, there was a, a time of darkness. Darkness came upon the face of the earth. And a lot of people talk about a lot of things, but I believe that that darkness was complaining because the light of the world was shining now. And he said, it is finished. Darkness no more. And the darkness was bowing to the, to the light of the world, which is Jesus Christ himself on that day. There was an earthquake as well. My friend, Earthquakes don't come that easy, but they do come once in a while, especially in some of those places where they've never been. And they come like the place where Jesus died. died. When he said he's finished, the earth began to quake. You know why? Because the earth was rejoicing. Because they were waiting for the renovation and the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were praying, they were hoping for the revelation of the children of God. Jesus said, it is finished. The earthquake waiting for the revelation of the children of God. I am a child of God. And before I die, I would like to see the revelation of the children of God upon this earth. It can be done. It is. can be done. It is hard to do. No, it isn't. Because Jesus said it's finished. We can accept it. We can have it. We can have it today or we can have it tomorrow. It doesn't make any difference. But we can have it because Jesus accomplished all things. What a wonderful thing we have. I feel sorry for those who don't know the Lord. I feel sorry for those who are moving around the earth with blind eyes and they don't know where they're going or what they're doing. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going because I'm going straight there into the presence of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you very much.